Welcome to The Secrets of Success. By following the proven techniques of the guests who appear on this series, you'll learn that even successful people run into detours and failures and how you can apply their success techniques to change your life. You're now listening to the most unique show on radio, the show dedicated to making you a success. Ted Larkins wants you to get to be happy. Today, he'll explain how. Ted, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me, Bill. Really great to be here. Now, Ted, you have the most unique background probably of anybody we've had on the show. Now, you've written a book, <laughs> Get to Be Happy, but yes. uh, typically we would think, okay, you're a college professor or you're just an author who sits there and writes these nice books and then goes mm-hmm. and assigns them in bookstores, etc. And that is definitely not you. So to kind of give our audience what I already know about you from going through the book, can you give us a quick overview of your life? <laughs> Yeah, be in happy. ten seconds, so, we'll give you ten seconds. 10, okay, ten seconds. <laughs> no, not really, not really. <laughs> so, so, look, I started. I, you know, I'm, I'm from Columbus, Ohio. That's where I grew up, and I and I did some bartending. I got my degree in bartending there from the International Bartending Institute. And, and you're the first one with, from the international. You know, we have Harvard, Yale, Columbia, but you're the first one from the International Bartending Institute. Well, let me tell you this, Bill. I then went out to Reno, Nevada, and I bartended at the uh, MGM Grand Hotel there, and I actually went through their bartending certificate. Kind of a graduate degree. Uh, Yeah, so it's a double major. All right. A master's in in bartending. Exactly, exactly. So I, uh, but I I bartended around, I was in in San Diego at the Sheraton and at at the MGM, and then I, my girlfriend came home one day, she was the piano singer on the lounge where I was bartending up in LA, and she said, hey, I I have a job offer to play the piano in Japan for three months. You want to come with me? And I said, sure, where's Japan? She said, it's the other side of Hawaii, come on. And two weeks later, everything was in storage, and and I, I ended up in Osaka, Japan. Uh, I was bartending and teaching English, you know, just kind of doing the foreigner traveling thing. And three months later, she said, hey, my gig's up. I'm going back to L.A. And I said, sayonara. <laughs> I'm going to stay here. And uh, and that's what I did, Bill. And over the bar, I was bartending. I met a guy. I said, I'm going to learn this language. And I met a guy who said that I could come do a homestay, live with he and his family and uh, for three months and in exchange for teaching his kids English. He had a five- and seven-year-old uh, boys. So that's what I did. Well, about two months into the homestay, at 10 o'clock one night, he knocked on my door and said, we do big business. He didn't speak much English, and I didn't speak much Japanese, but I had my dictionary. He came in, sat down, and handed me a small ripped piece of paper with a phone number. He said, I put James Dean on T-shirts. I said, yeah, okay. He said, call number. So I called the number. A guy answered. I said, hey, my name's Ted. I'm here in Japan with a guy who wants to use James Dean on T-shirts. Can you help me? The guy said, my name's Marcus Winslow. I'm James Dean's cousin, and this is called licensing. Pay me some money, pay me a percentage of sales, and, and I'll send you some some uh, images. And that's how things started. We did a quick $10,000 deal. Uh, Yoshida, the, my homestay father, started selling T-shirts. A couple weeks later, he knocked on my door at 10 o'clock. Hey, call him back. I want to do hats, baseball caps. James Dean baseball caps? For the $3,000, we had a James Dean baseball caps. Bill, over the next six years, my three-month homestay turned into six years. We did over $80 million in James Dean product. We sold, we, we paid his cousin, Marcus Winslow, over $4 million in royalties. So that was the beginning of my career in licensing. Uh, from that point, then I called Pepsi Cola. We became the agent uh, for Pepsi, and we did product all over Japan for Pepsi Cola. Uh, we represented that Paramount Pictures approach and said, "Hey, you're doing Pepsi Cola licensing shirts and hats. Could you do Roman Holiday and Top Gun things?" I didn't think so, but I said sure. And the next thing you know, we were we did a stage play, a million dollar deal for a Roman Holiday stage play in Japan, and and so that's as things evolved. We became Sony, MGM, DreamWorks, Fox Entertainment. We became the largest entertainment licensing company in Asia back in the 90s. So that's where my business career came in. And then uh, I, I, during a jog through Osaka Park, I had a, a bit of enlightenment. And I said, wow, there's more to this life than all this business. I went down to the Zen temples in Japan and meditated with the monks. And my life just kind of flowed out from there, Bill. Well, as I said, most unusual. And what you, because <laughs> you've done so much, you didn't even get a chance to drop in that one of the people you did business with was the world famous and one of the great of all time golfers, Jack Nicklaus, uh, the mu- musician Bon Jovi. And yeah. I know others from reading your book. So, I mean, yeah. just for our audience to appreciate, you went yeah. from bartending to teaching English in Japan to being a worldwide licensing expert. And now you've taken some time to look back on your life and tell us how of the things you've done 
really how to get to be happy. And yeah. you literally have a principle called get to, is that right? It is. It's called the get to principle. And I think what I've, you know, through my travels, and as you mentioned, you know, I, I partied with Bon Jovi, with John Bon Jovi in uh, in Japan. I, we did a, a slot machine, a, a Bon Jovi slot machine in Japan. We did that deal for John and the band. And, and when he would come to Japan, we would hang out. And what I, one of the things I realized is at first, you know, John was kind of standoffish. I'd done this big deal for him and he, you know, he wouldn't really even talk to me. But as I got to know him and as he became, you know, he started trusting me, he just became a regular guy just like everybody, Bill. And what I realized is that that you know, famous people, even Jack Nicholas. When I first met Jack, the golfer, I represented his brand, uh, 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 the Golden Bear, over in Japan. And at first, he too was standoffish. But what I learned is the famous, the celebrities, have to have this wall up to protect themselves because everybody's after them. But once trust is built, then they just become like you and me. They're just trying to be happy. They're just trying to figure this thing in life out. And so, what has come to me over the years is um, is that. What I realize is we don't have to do anything. We get to. And this shift from this victim that we all say all the time, oh, I have to do the dishes, I have to go to work, uh, just has us in this victim viewpoint. And when we shift it and say, I get to, you get into this mindset of great compassion and appreciation. And from there, life really changes and you start having, you know, just a different viewpoint on life. And it's a very powerful, a very powerful way to live. I want to tell you and to our audience, I've actually been doing this since I read your book and it works. And when you start to s- simple things, uh, I get to watch television. I get to walk the dog. I get yeah. to water the lawn. Um, mm-hmm. And you might say, well, that's crazy. But it really does change your mindset and put together with many of the other guests we've had, the neuroscientists, the books on how the mind controls what you do. This really does work. And I think you, you started the book with a quote, you're born and then you die. And in between, you get to do this thing called life. And I guess we might as well enjoy it because we're going to be doing it. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Look, we're on a ball hurling through space at 67,000 miles an hour. As long as we're here, we might as well enjoy the ride. <laughs> that's kind of my thing. And I really think that, and let me, I'll tell you a quick story. This is where the get to really solidified for me. I was grumbling. I was doing the dishes one day and oh, I got to do the dishes. And it hit me and I said, well, I, well, I get to do the dishes. And in that moment, my mind got quiet, and I had great compassion for the people that, that don't get to do the dishes, that don't get to have food. Like, and I realized that 20,000 people, give or take, will die today of starvation on the planet. We can't even comprehend that. And so when I, said, when I had that moment, I said, I get to, I had this compassion. Now, it wasn't feeling sorry and getting all dark. I, you know, I, can't, I, didn't, I didn't go there. I just went... Ah, compassion. And then at the same moment, I also had great appreciation. I just had a great meal. And as I kept scrubbing, I kind of smiled. I said, wow. And it wasn't, it was simply a quieting of the mind. It's this mindfulness that we're all looking for. But it happened naturally when I said, I get to do this. And then when I smiled, go ahead. No, no, I'm sorry to interrupt you because I want our audience to know if they're finding this as interesting as I did. And I spent time going through your book and really found it very uh, enlightening. Where can we tell us? Uh, I'll tell our audience the name of the book is Get to Be Happy by our guest Ted Larkins, L A R K I N S. Can you give us a website where we can find out more and where can we get the book? Yeah, it's very easy. Just go to tedlarkins.com and on there you will uh, you can find out a little bit more about me and about about the get to principle and right there there's a link to click and uh, you can go ahead and get the book there it's on uh it's an audio book it's a kindle and it's also uh just a regular paperback or hardback for you and now you mentioned in the book uh 50 times a day we're, according to your directions we're supposed to say get to dash smile yeah. dash do it now, fill us in. Why does that help, and, and what, the, what is that going to do for us? Okay, so I, I think the human, the, the human being needs a mantra. We need a, a, to make things a habit. We have to have a way to identify to do something over and over. So I created this thing called the Get To Mantra, and it goes just as you said. You, in any given situation, doing the dishes, cleaning the cat box, going to work, you say, I get to. And in that moment, your mind gets quiet, and as I said, you feel compassion and you feel appreciation for your life. It's what happens when you say, I get to. Then the next thing you do is you smile. See, when you deliberately smile, positive endorphins are released in your body, and you feel joy. So 
When you say I get to you, get quiet. The next moment you smile. And then the next thing you do is you do what you're going to do. And when you do that, you step into your power. You're no longer at the whim of life. You're no longer a victim to what's happening. You are in control saying, get to, smile, do this. And I tell you, I tell you, Bill, I don't say I have to or I get to anymore. And if it slips out, I quickly change it to, no, I get to. Even I get to, you know, somebody cuts me off in traffic. I get to respond. Now, you know, however you want to do that, I get to smile and appreciate that that human being, who knows what's going on in their life? And just let that be. And it's a very powerful way to be. My, and real quick, my, uh, my uh, wife said to me the other day, oh, get the kids. And I was working at my computer. I said, oh, yeah, I got to get the kids. And as I grabbed the keys off the, the counter and headed out the door, I turned around. I said, I get to. And she laughed. And as I got in the car, I just got this quiet moment of, wow compassion for we know that the horrible things that are happening out in the world right where people don't get to get their kids i was getting to and then i had great appreciation for my 13 year old with his colored hair and i smiled and by the time and then i smiled and then by the time i picked them up bill and i was doing it they jumped in the car hey daddy i said hey guys it was a whole different viewpoint a whole different mindset than going there saying i have to and i i can't recommend it enough and after you read the book and do the exercises in the book, people are really starting, as you mentioned, really starting to embrace this way of living. It's the get-to movement. And it really is. The, I like that. that. That's your new uh, baseball cap and T-shirt and pens that you can be giving out. <laughs> but it exactly. really is true. It works. And anybody who's ever been sick, if you've been in the hospital for a few days or just incapacitated where you couldn't get around, you, you start to realize the basic things like driving your bike, your car, walking down the block with the dog. You miss that. And then you, you kind of get back to them on an easy schedule and it feels good the first time you're walking the dog but this is what i th- took it to be all about that we take a few seconds to really appreciate that there's so many people who would love to be doing the simple things that we're doing driving to work being able to go out and get something for lunch whether it's fast food or a donut or just get out of the office and walk around um other countries where they don't have this, and, and you've experienced it, and if we get a chance, you'll tell us later. Uh, you were in India, and I think you were even at one point attempting to set up a hospital for the people because uh, just with basic medical care that we have in the United States, simple things, um, preventative medicine, so many lives could be saved. Is that correct? It's so true. It's so true. We take, we do take for granted so much that we have here. And, and that's not to, I think one of the things that is what's important is not to beat ourselves up when we, when we take things for granted or we just get used to things. Um, but it's really, because that's the kind of the nature of, of the human mind. But what this does is saying get to really does bring us back to being in the present moment and really appreciating what's here, touching things, smelling things, doing the dishes or look, there's a lot of dead people that would love to be doing the dishes right now. And that's not to be to be light about that, but it's truth. Really, can you just say, I get to and come into this moment of say, of appreciation and compassion? And it's very powerful. And I think, just as you said, when we do that, we automatically take a few seconds to say how lucky I am to have this wonderful mm-hmm. family. And even if you're arguing with them and there's little spats, they are wonderful. There's a lot of people who would give anything to have that family, whether they've lost them in an accident or passing through health reasons or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. uh, doing the simple tasks of life, just that you're healthy enough to do that. And someday we will be on a deathbed and we will pass. Uh, we would love to be out mowing the grass then or having that <laughs> next yes. round of golf. And uh, when you have that, it doesn't matter if you don't play so well or if you don't get the ball in the hole. You're out there playing and you're enjoying your friends and you have an opportunity. Uh, Ted, at this point, in the show would like to take a brief break but we want to come back and find out more about how to get to be happy and at this point we'd like to remind our listeners that you're listening to the secrets of success my name is bill haran the show is produced at the voice of nassau community college 90.3 whpc we'll be right back after this brief intermission you wanted to see me yes please have a seat So here's the thing. When this company brought you on, we took a chance on you. You didn't have that four-year college degree we typically look for. Right. But we gave you a shot anyway. And since then, you've worked incredibly hard and given it your all. Thanks. You've been an important asset to the team. But I don't think you can be an intern here anymore. We want to hire you. You're you're serious? Absolutely. Find your next great employee. Introduce yourself to the grads of life. Who are they? Talent worth knowing about. 
young adults of unique determination and experience. An ideal fit for your